Good evening and welcome. My name is Sal Sapienza, and I'm the pastor here at Douglas United Church of Christ. We're so glad and grateful that you've joined us this evening for our Christmas Eve tradition, the service of the lessons and carols. Our historic little church was built in 1882, and just a few years later, the tradition of the lessons and carols began. This evening, you will hear the story of the birth of Jesus, told through readings from the Gospels and through beloved Christmas carols that we all know and love. As we could not safely gather a choir together in person this year, instead we'll be sharing video performances from previous year's Christmas choirs here at our church. As always, we will conclude our service of the Lessons and Carols tonight with the singing of the beloved Christmas carol, Silent Night. So at that time, I'll invite you to dim the lights, light a candle, and sing along at your home for the final song of the evening. So let us begin our Christmas Eve tradition of the service of the lessons and the carols by singing along to our opening song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I invite you to join us as we sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting it might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will have no end. How will this be, Mary? asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, 
But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all your people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Oh, 
When the angel had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told.
in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. As I mentioned at the top of the service, our Christmas Eve tradition of the service of the lessons and carols has been going on here at our church for over 130 years. But in all likelihood, there was probably one year that the service didn't take place. On Christmas Eve of 1918, Many churches in our country were closed for services as we were experiencing another pandemic back then, the Spanish flu. I'm sure that Christmas Eve felt very different that year, just as it does this year. But I'm so grateful that you are staying home and safe for one another. Though we may be physically separated from one another right now, we know that we are always connected in spirit and that we are not alone. The beautiful service of the lessons and carols this evening reminds us that God is always with us, always and in all ways. Even in this time of great darkness, the light of hope is on its way. The Christmas story reminds us that God so loved the world that God gave us of its very self, of its very nature, that God so loved us that the divine became human, the word was made flesh. The light of the world was born in human form, not so that we would worship the human form, but so that we would discover through him that the same Christ light dwells within us too. Do you know what Jesus said about you? He said, you are the light of the world. Yes, you are. You were born with the same Christ light as Jesus. You just forgot it. That's why Jesus came to us, to remind us of our light. And he said, all of the things that I have done, you can do. And then he added, these things and greater. The purpose of Christmas is to remind us of our light, to remind us of the gift of our divine magnificence. And each year we celebrate this light by lighting Advent candles and decorating Christmas trees and lampposts with multitudes of sparkling lights. Other faith and cultural traditions also celebrate the light during this time of year. Diwali and Hanukkah and Bodhi Day and Kwanzaa and winter solstice celebrations are all celebrations of the one true light. In winter, in a time of darkness, the world comes together to celebrate and remember the light and to prepare room for it in our hearts. 
And so my question for you this evening is, have you made room in the inn so that the light can be born in you? The inn is your innermost being, your inner dwelling place. Have you made room there for the light? If you're in, your inner dwelling place is full of anxiety, worry, fear, anger, lack, and resentment, you have prepared no room for the light. Inside of you is a sacred dwelling place of the Most High, where all is calm and all is bright, all is peaceful and all is light. God loves you so much that God gave you this gift, this place of peace and light. This is the kingdom of heaven, which Jesus says dwells within you. We enter into this kingdom through the silence. Scripture tells us, be still and know. Be still and know that God dwells with you and within you. That is what the name Emmanuel means. God is with you and within you. The 13th century Christian mystic Meister Eckhart said, all of us are called to be mothers of God because God is always needing to be born. God is always needing to be born. It's present tense. That's why we don't say Christ was born. We say Christ is born. That's what Christmas is all about. We're not just having a birthday party for a baby born more than 2,000 years ago. We're making room for the Christ light to be born in us. So this evening, in the silence of the night, we wait. We wait for the light of the world to be born, to be made manifest in us. So right now, I invite you to dim the lights and to light a candle at your home as we conclude our service with the singing of Silent Night. For look, a light is drawing near. Let every heart prepare him room. Thank you. 